Okay, so the stripping continues. Just the bonnet and front wings off. Keeping the boot off as well. And unraveling and uh, labeling up all the, the loom. Side curtain airbags off. Just generally unclipping everything. Look at the windscreen. I found um, that. So that's the heater elements for the uh, the front triple cam. So I think they're supposed to go into the the windscreen under here somewhere. But that was actually unplugged, and I just found this tripped in there. So I don't know whether it's had a replacement windscreen. Or what? But lights off, staying the cameras off, B pillar cameras and card reader. And yeah, making progress. So the 14mm silicon hose came in and it's a lovely fit pushes on and then I, I can't even get it off manually. Um, I also gave it an extra day and ordered the right size um, spring clips this style. So a much more reliable connection and these are a lot more pliable. So not worried about any strain on connections now. And if you haven't got one, these little tools are great for opening up the, the clips, putting them in position and releasing. So yeah, so that's the internals of the battery done. I'll um, have to get some sheet steel to, to fill in that hole. I'm also going to build up a little bit of a frame onto that sheet steel to make a removal section to go over this lot. So the, the original of the, the penthouse cover was 10 mil above the cover surface so for this connection so this and the one on the other side go off to the the bms obviously the, the modules are linked for that low so that row so that's got to be a little bit higher as well and then i've ordered a few mix and match different types of um crimp end fitting so i'll experiment and see actually how much space i need back here once it's in the car but I'm going to build the frame into the cover permanently connect it and then I'll just bolt on a cover which is designed um, to suit whichever clearance I need for the, the seats but I'm pretty sure I'm going to be able to mount the uh, the pyro fuse in the middle there it just saves another two big diameter wires um, and yeah so coming on so yeah ready to seal up and I've also put some uh, tie wraps around the clips, as you can see here, they're offset. So I guess Tesla must have had issues with them slipping off um, in practice. But they're all on now. Okay, so the car's about ready to have its roof chopped off. So all the roof glass is out. Typically the first one I did, the rear one, is the only one that comes out surviving. Um, but I've got a feeling I'm going to have to probably end up chopping the antenna connectors off so I can remake a, some more um, to fit within the gold wing roof. The pano roof broke and so did the windscreen. But the windscreen, the um, heater elements for the camera were broken. And I'm going to have to harvest this plastic moulding to glue onto the, the new screen so not the end of the world but I was trying to take it out in one you can see I got a bit pissed off with it by the end so yeah next is roof off and then figure out my exact cut lines I think I'll probably cut that centre thicker one out because it's near enough 475 between those rails but it doesn't quite line up with where the 
the battery mounts are so the the floor is going to be staggered from the main beams but also before i do that chop i'll take the outer skin off all the way up there lots more wiring disconnected and just it's going to be all bundled up in the front foot wells for the cut so yeah getting there Right, to make the connections between the battery posts there and there and the remote um, penthouse, I found these brass crimps and luckily that just so happens to be threadable. So that's the original um, nut. So all these posts on the, the modules are, th are threaded posts. So that will go up into the penthouse, into the contactor where required. And at this end I'll have, um, let's see, I'll have eyelets. But actually these ones, the, the two side modules are much higher. So what I've seen um, Superfast Matt and a couple of other people do is chop them right down. So they're actually aluminium. See, so I'll chop it right down. These battery terminals, the big ones with crimps. I'll just drill through with an 18 mil drill bit to get rid of the taper, and then I'll have a nice low profile mount, and that that will bring me back to making this cover for accessing those and that will only have to be I don't know 10 20 mil deep then so that'll work should work really well I'll I might I'm in two minds so I'll see what the clearance is like whether I leave the um the pyro fuse between the, the two middle modules or whether I just cable out and leave them inside the penthouse it's all down to what clearance I have and also with these coolant lines on the battery pack, this one I shortened, heated up and pressed back over. Now it's not just relying on the barbs, there's a, a no ring in there. I'll probably put a band clamp over as well. So there are two that needed that. Luckily this one ends with, with that fitting and that one has got to go off up to the penthouse in a new location. So I'll, I'll just get some other hose, some flexible hose to go off that one. And the other one on the front, again, managed to push on fairly well, so I'll, I'll clamp it. If they don't work, I'll just replace them with some, some aluminium tube going all the way back. Um, swage those and then just have some short lengths of um, rubber or silicon hose onto, onto these fittings, but I think it'll be fine. And you know, so I'll probably be able to even do that after the fact because it is a, a pretty straight shot from the front wheel well. As long as the suspension's in the right place, I should be able to push it through. That's the roof off. Get the B pillars off next. Little roadster. So the sill outer skin removed. So this is in the area that I'm going to have to cut. There we go. Work my way through. Just take the outer skins off, and then I do have to remove the brake lines. And I'll mark those up for shortening as well. That's all the wiring unhooked from the back end. So I've mostly just thrown it over the dash and chucked it in the front, um, just as long as it's out of the, the way of the cut lines, which I am working out now. And if you can see, I've got some pencil lines where the actual cut is. I'll um, 
cut a bit less of the floor so I can, I've got an overlap to um, yeah, weld all that together. Probably use my um, little tool that'll put a little offset in the, the panel in the sheet metal. Yeah, getting close to the big big moment. Okay, so that's the main bit of floor cut out. I've left probably an inch, a good inch or so overlap, so I'll be able to see some trimming. Uh, I'll get this out of the way before I uh, get into cutting the main main side rails. We have a hole. Okay, so first sill outer skins off. Left that stagger down at the bottom um, just to line up with one of the, the remaining battery um, fixings. That one there. So it'll help with a bit of a stagger joint as well. But you see, so you've got this aluminium um, extrusion going all the way through. So there was, there's a bit of foam down there that I'll have to bash out. I'll measure it. It's actually sort of slash cut at the front. So I'll measure back, do the slash cut, pull it out, and then it'll be kind of quite a nice self-locating jig. So I've got the, the front and back sections um, sitting on some stands. But yeah, the other side, and it'll probably start feeling a bit loose. It was a bit of a pain getting the, the cuts either end because of the, the overlaps of the, the floor that I'm keeping. Uh, got there in the end. Okay, it's now both sides, inner and outer sills cut off. See I've marked up where the, uh, the side beam uh, is cut, so yeah, cut that now. And I have two halves of a Model 3. That shot, that, well, the way I had it propped up, just, it was nicely balanced load-wise. There was no pinging or anything. Luckily, everything was weighted towards the center of the car. Yeah, so I have to remove the front bits of the side beam. See if it slides together. Okay, so this is going surprisingly easily so there is foam adhesive that sticks the uh, the beam in but it's easy enough to break the only trouble well not trouble issue i had was this bracket so i drilled out the spot welds on the outside obviously i had to cut a bit more of the outer sill off it'll go anywhere in the end um it's nice nice to see that strengthening for a, a jacking point when you're doing the battery work um, so yeah I'll just measure that up um, drill out that rivet rivet onto the old section and then yeah I'll see a few more bits to do but not as big a job as I was fearing so in the end I've just welded another flange nut in there um, that's just because of the, the change in spacing with the shortening. I've riveted on these <clears throat> these brackets and then I'll re-plug weld them in afterwards under there. Um, four pan flanges all weld three primed. And then I've joggled this flat. It's a bit wobbly because of these pressings, but I'll, I'll straighten it out as, as it goes down. But, First job is to get these um, side rails slid back in and just double check the length and square and straightness. Then I'll weld it up. I'll probably put some strengthening plates on the outside afterwards because it's all going to be hidden anyway. Don't need to worry about putting them inside. So we have a tack together short wheel base Tesla. So you can see that sash cramp I was using between the original uh, door hinges just to tweak 
uh, the gap for my reference dimensions. So uh, yeah, I marked, I put a mark there and I marked there, closed it up. You can see that floor pan seam is going to be nice. Um, I had some minor issues with it, um, just getting it lined up perfectly. So in the end, I, I got this steel angle section and bolted that up and that kept it true. So obviously still final welding to do, but yeah, feels like it's coming together. <laughs>